Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. Do us a favor, if you find this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling on memory. So the uh, R720 takes DDR3 memory. It has uh, 24 DIMM slots inside. There's a number of different speeds that it accepts, as low as 1066, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866. I will note the 1866, while it is compatible, it will clock down to 1600, which is the true fastest speed for the R720. Uh, as far as the different DIMMs, sizes you can get something uh, super low like a 2 gig module 4 gig 8 gig 16 gig 32 gig or all the way up to 64 gig and you might be going wait 64 gig the Dell spec sheet doesn't say the R720 accepts 64 gigs well it can with one type of RAM and that gets us to what type of RAM does the R720 accept well there's two types of RAM. There's ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, and there's load reduced, which is known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 512 gigabytes using 16 32 gigs at 1600 speed. Whereas with LR DIMMs, you get three times the scalability and you can get 1.5 terabytes using 24 64 gigs at 1600 speed. And that brings us to a question that we hear quite often well, why can I only put in 16? of the R DIMMs and you can put in 24 of the LR DIMMs and that's a great question it's known as the rank rule and we'll get into that in more depth uh, when we get inside we can actually look at the channels and show you uh, how to uh, configure your system so uh, but before we do that I want to put my ESD gloves on because I always uh, want to be safe when you're inside the machine and we'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gloves, we are safe to insert the DIMMs. So we have our tray of 64 gig modules over here. So we're gonna pop the latch and open the top. We're gonna remove the air baffle. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fan bank. Um, honestly, it probably would help you at home just to give you more access to it. You don't necessarily have to, um, but I recommend it just to have a little bit of extra space uh, to uh, install your DIMMs properly. So, all right, um, first things first, let's go over uh, the DIMMs and the channels before we actually start installing them because uh, that's how you install them or how to know where to install them. So, if you saw our CPU video in the series, this is CPU 1, this is CPU 2. Um, CPU 1 controls 12 DIMM slots over here, and CPU 2 controls 12 DIMM slots over here. All right, with CPU 1, uh, there are, you'll see all these uh, color-coded tabs, okay? The white one I just pushed back and I opened up over here, uh, that is A1. So that is the first channel and the first slot in the channel, all right? And then it goes to A2 over here. And what it does is you notice that it skips the black and the green because this is the second and third slot in the channel right here. And this next white one is the second channel, and this is the second and third slot in the channel, all right? So this is A1, this is A2. You come to the outside over here, and this is A3, and this is A4. So again, A1, A2, A3, A4 are all the white tabs, and the white is the start of the channel. The black is the second slot in the channel, and the green is the third slot in the channel. So if this is A1, A2, A3, A4, you got it. This is A5, A6, A7, A8. So all the blacks go next. And now we circle back to the last slot, which uh, last slot in the channel, which is green. So this is A9, A10, A11, A12. Okay. So uh, you can kind of follow uh, how the uh, the channels work um, in this way. And the importance of this is that you notice there are four channels per CPU, and within that there are three DIMM slots per channel. And that's the key right there is the three DIMM slots per channel. Because some motherboards are two DIMM slots per channel, and they don't run into the rank rule. Well, the rank rule, what it essentially states is that you can only have eight ranks per memory channel. And since all 32 gigs, uh, or let me phrase this differently, all 32 gig ECC registers are quad rank modules. Um, you can do some quick math and if you install uh, the first channel, this is four ranks, and then the second slot in the channel, that's eight ranks, and then as soon as you put it, that third one in, well now you've broken the rank rule. You're 12 ranks in as opposed to when you just put them in the first two slots, that's when 
you get to eight. So that's why you can only put 16 in with ECC registered because essentially you cannot use any of the green slots with ECC registered. So if you were trying to max out with ECC registered, you'd use all the whites and all the black slots and none of the greens and that will protect you from the rank rule because again that only gets you to eight ranks per channel um, but that's why you can't use the third uh, third slot is because you essentially break the rank rule now LR dims they are a uh, newer better technology than red uh, ECC registered now there are some differences of course uh, but from a scalability standpoint they are better um, and some some people will say from a performance standpoint they prefer ECC registered even though they are honestly very very close um, but the scalability of, of load reduced modules uh, is very nice because it essentially the DIMMs are seen as dual rank. So you can install them in uh, all the channels and use 24 DIMM slots as opposed to 16. And on top of that, they have a 64 gig module for the LR DIMM. So that gets you to 1.5 terabytes as opposed to only 512 with ECC registered. So clearly on, on a scalability side, uh, LR DIMMs are the winners. So um, we stock a, a ton of the 64 gigs for this reason uh, because people like to max out some of these older machines. Uh, so if you're looking for 1.5 terabytes for your R720 server or any other DIMM for that matter, definitely give us a ring and we can help you out with that we have a bunch of them in stock so all right now we're gonna actually show you how to install them so I'm gonna go ahead and close everything uh, back up to make it kind of easy to show you uh, what we're doing here um, so we're gonna start with the first channel which is gonna be the a1 a2 a3 a4 that we talked about and this is the a3 and this is the a4 since I did them backwards as I said um, so I like to open them up before I do it you need to make sure that your dim is aligned properly so if you look right here uh, there is a notch in the middle of the leads this notch is known as a key it is not perfectly centered so when you go to install the dim if you it might be hard to see on camera but there's a little uh, black plastic piece in the middle of the well not in the middle but kind of in the middle of the uh, each dim socket and it flip-flops right here from here from here over here it just it keeps flip-flopping so you, the problem is sometimes people get a nice groove and they're just popping them in popping them in and they don't realize it flip-flops and all of a sudden you, you bust a lead or you bust a, a socket so that's one of the things I always tell people just make sure um, you line them up properly so we're gonna go ahead and line this up uh, we got it in um, and then this is the next thing I like to say, it's in technically, right? It looks like it's in, uh, but it's actually not fully inserted. Um, and this is a very, very common issue where someone thinks that they've inserted a module and you need to hear these two clicks. And those two clicks, uh, they essentially let you know that you have uh, fully inserted the module. And sometimes what will happen is you'll have something just kind of in, actually let's do it on this side, it might be a little easier for the camera. It might be just sticking out just a little bit, not a ton, but just a little bit like this, and you don't notice it, and that module is not inserted, so you just have to make sure you hear both clicks. So I kind of stress that point because we have a ton of people who always will, I shouldn't say a ton, but it seems like every week there's someone who has an issue where they think that they have, um, and it flip-flops over here, I want to just point that out, uh, that they think they have an issue with a uh, bad dim and it's just not fully inserted. It's just a, a very, very common user error. So it's one of the things we always tell people if you're at home um, and you have a dim that you think is bad, rotate the dims around. Um, if the if the dim is bad, it'll actually follow the, the channels that are to whatever socket you move it to or what slot you move it to. So that's how we always recommend to someone to, to troubleshoot. Um, and most time people rotate it around and they actually just insert it properly and then there's no issue. So yeah, all right, so we've done the first channel. So now we are going to do the second channel. So I'm gonna pop open all the blacks because I like to have them open before I start installing them. So just again, make sure you have everything lined up properly. Click, click. Click, click. And one thing actually I should point out, if you have two CPUs, what I would actually do is not start doing the blacks. I would come all the way over here to the whites and do all the whites first, uh, but I was kind of just trying to focus on one to show you the, the channel situation here. Uh, but I do want to note that if you have two CPUs, you definitely want to come over here and do all the whites first before you start doing the blacks over here. So, um, all right, now we're going to flip flop over here, so make sure you line it up properly. Okay, so this is what I wanted to kind of highlight. As you see, the green is the third slot. It's empty. 
for ECC registered, even though these are the 64 gig LRDMs, for ECC registered, this is how your channels would end up looking, um, where there would be just the green slot empty, and that would be the most that you can do with quad rank. Now, if you're using uh, you know, a four gig or an eight gig or a 16 gig, uh, most likely those are gonna be dual rank or single rank technically for some of the lower end ones. Um, and those, you don't have to worry about the rank one. You can completely fill them up. You can load in all 24 16 gigs and get, uh, was that 288 I believe? So you can do stuff like that just fine. So, all right, now uh, just to, uh, for the sake of time, we're gonna fast forward and we are gonna completely max this out and be right back. All right, so now we have all 24 64 gigs in. Uh, we've gotten our 720 up to 1.5 terabytes. Uh, again, I do want to point out that the Dell spec sheet does not say that it is supported. Uh, it is supported. Uh, and one thing I did want to point out about the 64 gigs is you do need to make sure that you have a V2 processor and you have updated BIOS and firmware. Um, if you don't, you might run into an issue that the 64 gigs won't register, won't work. Um, they work just fine. Uh, we use them all the time. But those are the, the keys is you do have to have a, a V2 and you do have to have um, an updated firmware and BIOS, okay? Um, and if you don't know how to update your firmware and BIOS, we actually do a whole uh, video series, uh, or we'll do a whole video on how to update that in a mass updates video. So uh, that will show you exactly how you can do that if that is an issue for you. So, all right, well, again, thanks for stopping by. Um, if you need any uh, memory upgrades yourself or your 720 or for any other Dell server for that matter, please email us at sales at cloudengine.com, sales at cloudengine.com. We also custom build new super micro. Uh, we do a ton of used Dell, HP, HP, uh, Cisco, IBM, you name it, and we'd love the opportunity to, to win your business. So please uh, email us at sales at cloudengines.com. Hey, thanks again for stopping by. Mm -hmm.